It has been about six weeks since I made my video on this season's anime lineup, and while I'm generally pretty happy with how that video turned out, looking back, I have one issue that I think I need to correct. In my ranking of Tonikawa, I put it lowest on my list because I was worried that it was going to shift the focus away from the main draw of the series, Nasa and Tsukasa's relationship. At the time, it seemed like the show was setting up for some more mysterious and supernatural themes that would be expanded upon in the coming episodes. But that didn't happen. Much to my surprise, the show didn't ever shift its focus drastically towards that mystery and left it in the background as a slow burn rather than pulling the thread and changing the show's direction. And I know that for some people, this may have been a disappointment because the mystery is a genuinely interesting one. But this is exactly what I was hoping the show would do. So today, I want to take some time to revisit Tonikawa nearly six episodes later and talk about how it has really grown on me compared to when it started. From the very start of the series, I was interested in the dynamic between Nasa and Tsukasa. The concept of two characters in a romance anime just getting married on the spot in the first episode is extremely unique. Most anime take time to develop the courtship of the main couple and save their actual romance as the season finale's payoff, but here, things get going right away. And this works for a few reasons. For starters, this is an immediate subversion of one of the biggest tropes in romance anime, and that inherently carries at least a little bit of interest. It's just really nice to not have to wait around all season for two characters who are obviously into each other to finally figure it out. While that kind of interaction can make for a good romance story, just like any other trope, once it gets used enough, it becomes increasingly difficult to feel unique or new. Another reason Nasa and Tsukasa's relationship works so well is that it allows the story to portray the main couple from a different angle than in your typical romance anime. But what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the other romance anime that I'm currently watching this season, Adachi and Shimamura, as a contrast. In Adachi and Shimamura, the characters are constantly tiptoeing their way through the relationship and feeling things out. The show takes some time to play out interactions between the two girls and then show how they really felt about it alone. Now, I like this because it shows a relatable side to these characters that almost anyone has felt. When you're entering into the beginnings of a new relationship, you don't always say exactly what's on your mind, and in order for the show to convey that, it needs time alone with its characters for them to express their internal thoughts about their interactions. However, in Tonikawa, since the main couple is working under the dynamic of a married couple, albeit an extremely strange one, we don't see much time with the characters alone recontextualizing past story beats in their view. For the most part, our main couple is on the same page about most things. And while they do still have to feel things out and set norms and boundaries with each other, it doesn't feel so high stakes. And that's what allows for the writing to be less high stakes as well. What I love so much about Tonikawa's take on romance is that it perfectly blends all the best parts of a romance anime with the comfort and relaxation of a slice of life anime. It doesn't need to play up small conflicts that would cause anxiety in a pair of teenagers trying to see if they can make something work, because the main couple is literally bound by law. Small conflicts are taken at face value, and the characters are reasonable people who don't obsess over misunderstandings or small inconsistencies. That is such a nice change of pace for me, because I feel like every single romance anime I watch has a plot that is driven primarily by misunderstandings and the dramatization of the following events. There are so many scenes where I think to myself, None of this would have happened if you just took a moment to say, no, this is what I was doing, or something to that effect. Now, I am by no means a conversationalist, or someone who is good at communicating everything perfectly in every social situation. But I swear, some of these misunderstandings feel so contrived and unrealistic. In Tonikawa, there's none of that whatsoever. The show actually lands on the opposite side of that extreme, and seems to downplay even the most dramatic events in its plot. Minor spoilers here, so skip to the time on screen if you wish to remain blind. In episode 9, Nasa and Tsukasa's apartment literally burns to the ground, leaving them homeless, and they barely even make a fuss. Obviously, they aren't happy about it, but the characters make no effort to dwell on it or focus on the negatives. Nasa, upon seeing the rubble, immediately asks a bystander if anybody was hurt, and after learning that everyone is safe, he seems to return to his regular happy-go-lucky attitude. And it doesn't take much longer for them to find a new place to stay while they look for new housing. I really appreciate how it has stayed overbearingly positive throughout the entire run of the show, and the writers know exactly what they're doing. Some of my favorite moments are when you think Nasa and Tsukasa are about to have some sort of misunderstanding that will cause them to have an argument, but in true Tonikawa fashion, it always resolves itself with a bit of realistic communication. I love how this is played for laughs because it really points out how silly some of the tropes actually are in a more standard romance show. So this is all well and good, but how does it address my main concern from my seasonal showdown video? Namely, does it ever stray too much into the mysterious aspects of the plot? 
I am happy to report that this show dedicates nearly all of its time to Nasa and Tsukasa. Only a select few episodes really chose to put the mystery in the foreground, and those episodes are few and far between. I think this makes for the perfect approach to this kind of show, because where it lacks in melodrama and other more exciting features that would keep people interested, it makes up for them with a supernatural subplot that is constantly being hinted at through a range of very small to slightly less small hints. Little details like Tsukasa's extensive knowledge about history but her apparent disdain for it speak to something more that is happening just beneath the surface without causing reason for panic or stress. It also makes for fun little moments where you get to see the other characters recognize this and play along with it. Every once in a while, Tsukasa will say something or act a certain way that isn't exactly natural, or maybe Chitose will let on a little bit more about Tsukasa than we already know. And because of this, we get to see Nasa's confusion. Tsukasa seems to have an almost anachronistic personality that feels more like it would be fit for someone who has lived through the past that she knows so much about. She also will sometimes speak with the wisdom of somebody far beyond her years. Now, I think most people keeping up with the show can put together what this is hinting at, but all the same, the mystery does serve to add a little bit of spice to the mix without going crazy and losing its focus. Overall, I was absolutely wrong about Tony Kawa. Not that I gave it any sort of bad review or anything, but my preconceptions were completely off, as it has easily surpassed Sleepy Princess and the Demon Castle on my list. Were I to rearrange my top three of this season, I would swap those two. Adachi and Shimamura is still my number one pick, but Tony Kawa has become an extremely close second. If you're the kind of person who waits for a season to air and then binges all the episodes at once, consider putting this one on your list, because it brings some much needed positivity into such a downtrodden year. Hey there, thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you made it this far, then you probably liked what I had to say. If that's the case, consider leaving me a like so I know I'm doing something right. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an upload, and I also have a Twitter and an Instagram if that is something that interests you. Links to those will be below. But with all that YouTube stuff out of the way, I just want to say thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.